Hi guys, Daz here with another episode of my weekly series, Daz's News Round. This time it is episode 12. It seems an age since I've been on screen, so thank you for your patience. A lot to get through. Um, as always, there will be spoilers. And I'm not going to include the hot books, because um, they are basically shown in my hot comic book alerts. So I'd appreciate it if you go and watch those uh, to find out which books are really gaining heat at the moment. Let's get into the news. Coming in January the 11th to the DC streaming service is a 2006 pilot for the Aquaman show. Yeah, I've seen the Aquaman uh, pilot. It stars just, Justin Hartley, who was um, Green Arrow in Smallville, I believe. Yeah, he's Arthur Curry, and it comes from the Smallville creators. It's got a, a Ving Ryan, Ving Rhymes is it, and it and a Lou uh, Lou Gossett Lou Diamond Junior Gossett Junior. Yeah, but it is it's actually quite a good uh, watch. It, the special effects were pretty impressive for back then. Um, yeah, I think at some point it was it was supposedly going to cross over with uh, Smallville, but I don't know how that was going to work because he would have been Aquaman and Green Arrow. But uh, yeah, check that out. And also, uh, coming to uh, Netflix in January, January the 11th, I'm very excited as Titans is finally going to air in the UK, legally. Um, I've not seen it and I have been waiting very patiently. Um, yeah, great show by the looks of it. I, I've just watched the trailer for the uh, finale, actually. I shouldn't have, I don't like to spoil things, but uh, I couldn't resist. And about that trailer, Batman debuts, and it's up to Robin to stop him. Um, I'm not sure what I feel about that, really, Batman versus Robin, but... And I also don't understand why Batman is allowed to be on the Titan show, but he's not allowed to be in Arrowverse. Um, I was hoping that they would, like, include the Titans and Doom Patrol and Swamp Thing and Stargirl in this Arrowverse world. Because um, it makes no sense to have two separate, well, th a three. You've got the DCU you've, on the on the big screen, and then you've got Arrowverse, and now like the Titans universe. I don't know. It's all getting a bit complex, but uh, can't wait to see that show. Um, yeah, the Spider Man, the animated into the Spider Verse. Um, I'm hoping to go and see that within the next week or so. I'm going to see Aquaman tomorrow with the family, so I'm excited about that. Well, the second spin-off film, um, if you saw one of my alerts, I, I spoke about there's going to be a, a, an all-female team uh, arriving. Well, in, uh, the second spin-off film would also focus on Miles Morales and uh, Gwen Stacy's bet budding romance. So, uh, can't wait to see this animated thing. Uh, they're saying it's possibly the best Marvel film to date, but I can't, for the life of me, in my own opinion... Although the animation looks superb, give me live action in it every day. This film is not going to top Infinity War. I can't believe that. Um, Kelly Sue DeComic and Matt Fraction have signed an exclusive TV deal with legendary uh, creator. Uh, and it's going to see they're going to discuss the creator own comic and several exclusive um, things that they're going to be working on with, with legendary. So that's that's pretty exciting. I may well do a an alert on some of their properties. Uh, I know one, and uh, I believe they they did sex criminals, if I'm not mistaken. So look out for upcoming news on their deal. Deborah Ann Wall, who was Karen Page in Daredevil, well, she's landed her next role, and that is going to be as a dungeon master. Yeah, she will produce and star in a, a show called Relics and Rarities. Uh, it's an, an upcoming geek and sundry series and on the Alpha streaming service where she will lead a Dungeons and Dragons campaign as the DM and storyteller. I know, it's a thing I've never really watched is uh, Dungeons and Dragons, well, or played Dungeons and Dragons. My, my daughter plays Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, she quite enjoys it. Uh, I know it's got a massive fan base, so that show could be a hit. Um, I do think uh, Deborah Ann Waugh is a good actress, actually. I enjoyed her role as Karen Page. 
Moving on. Talking of uh, Daredevil, Marvel's Netflix heroes have a two-year no-appearance clause. So basically, they are not allowed to appear in anything other Marvel-related for two years. And that's, that is disappointing. Because, um, of course, they're all slowly biting the dust. Um, it's only Jessica Jones and Punisher remaining at the moment. I am going to be very sad, obviously, when my favourite show, Jessica Jones, bites the dust. But uh, hopefully we're going to see them, but not for two years. Um, I'm guessing at some point, they, well, having said that, I did read that they're not going to be appearing on the Marvel streaming service. Um, but like I said, I, I, I did pick up that Daredevil was perhaps being discussed to be appearing in the Black Widow movie um, next year. Uh, sorry, 2020. That would be exciting. And Shamik Moore, the actor who voices Miles Morales, wants to reprise his role in the upcoming live-action MCU films. So um, it's just a matter of time before Miles Morales does appear in the MCU, I believe. Um, but uh, I think Shamik Moore's 23, and isn't Miles Morales like a teen? So I have to do some work there. Uh, Joe... Joel McHale has been cast as Sylvester Pemberton. Now, the reason I didn't include this in a hot comic book earlier is because Sylvester Pemberton was the Golden Age star man. Um, and none of us can afford a book from the 1940s. I may do an alert at some point on other star men to look out for, as I have one or two, I believe. Now... In a survey con uh, conducted, uh, Stanley and Black Panther were among Google's top 2018 searches. Quite interesting. Um, yeah. Stanley, still hard to believe he's, he, he's gone, really. I don't know. Netflix has greenlit a TV ad adaptation of... I am not okay with this from Charles Foreman. It's going to be 18 episodes and it is basically about a, uh, Sydney who is a 15 year old uh, female freshman that has a lot of secrets that is only kept in her diary. But um, including them, she has telekinetic powers. Talking of Punisher recently, Netflix's Punisher season two will debut uh, in January. And probably be cancelled in February, if, if it's what I've been led to believe. That will leave just Jessica Jones, and uh, I think they have basically filmed season three. Sad times. I watched the crossover in the week of the first part of Elseworlds uh, from the CW. It was great fun. It was great to see Amazo. Um, didn't know that. Didn't know that character was going to appear. It took all the the gang to take him down. Um, well, the next big event from CW, the next big crossover, that is going to be Crisis on Infinite Earth. Yeah, that's exciting. Obviously, one of the big iconic stories in DC Comics. And that will be coming at the end of 2019. Doctor Strange director Scott Derrickson. He's uh, linked to... To deal, uh, he's linked to deal to write and direct a sequel to Doctor Strange. That has got me excited. I thoroughly enjoyed Doctor Strange uh, one, and I actually thought Doctor Strange was probably my favourite character in Infinity War. Um, so that's exciting that we're getting a lot more Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, that is eyeing a May two thousand and twenty one release. Now Valiant Comics, of course, they're coming in with some big movies of their own. We are getting Bloodshot in 2020. Um, and the second of those films, apparently, is going to be Harbinger. And Dylan O'Brien is being cast as, is supposedly going to be cast as Peter Stonecheck. Uh, Benice Feldstein is Faith Herbert. And Noah Cantalino is Joe Iron. Yeah, so that is probably going to be coming in about 2021, I believe. Harbinger. I can never find issue one of Harbinger in, in the old uh, 
indie boxes. I know a lot of you have it. I'm very envious. Congrats. Uh, talking of the CW crossover event, uh, finally we may be getting Green Lantern in the Arrowverse as it was revealed that John Diggle on another Earth is in fact John Stewart, I guess. And uh, it was discussed and apparently he may be donning the costume in the final episode of that little Elseworlds run. So that is very exciting. G.I. Joe. I actually quite enjoyed those films. You know, I know they've got their detractors, but it was good action packed. It was pretty good fun. Well, they are, there is a Snake Eyes film coming and it is going to be a prequel to the two G.I. Joe films. And Bray Park, who played Snake Eyes, is not going to be recast as it is going to be a prequel. And Ray Park is 44, so they are now looking to recast Snake Eyes for the G.I. Joe uh, franchise. Talking of DC Universe just now, they are to stream their new DC animated movies on the release day. So basically, as soon as they come out in the shops, they will be showing the film on their service, which is excellent. I would love to get this DC streaming service. Somehow I'm gonna look into it. Hopefully they do it on subscription over here. Now last week I think I, I talked about that Amy Adams was done playing Lois Lane and I wasn't too disappointed in that. It just doesn't look like a Lois Lane to me. Well, apparently she's not officially done. So we're gonna be seeing more Amy Adams, Lois Lane, down the line in the DCU. Tim Burton, I don't like Tim Burton's films, other than Batman, of course. Um, so Johnny Depp, isn't it? And Helen Bonham Carter, they don't seem to be in all of them. I hate it, like Alice in Wonderland and things like that. Nightmare Before Christmas, not for me. I know he's got his fans, not for me. Well, he, Tim Burton almost made a Goosebumps movie back in the 1990s. Um, again, I don't like his style of movie. Um, having said that, like I said, Batman was fantastic. But uh, I watched the Goosebumps uh, with Jack Black at the cinema. It was okay. I liked Slappy. Good little character. The old uh, ventriloquist doll. Aquaman. I'm going to see it tomorrow, as I said. But that has already raced past 250 million at the international box office. This could be the biggest pull for DC Comics yet. Um, I am excited. I've not seen any trailers. I've kept away. Um, but early uh, reviews and what I've caught from people, what they've said, is a lot of good action and great fun. So I film this at the cinema at the moment and uh, hasn't really got a lot of press. I thought the trailer looked okay, but I don't know whether I'm going to watch it. Mortal Engines. Yeah. Well, that has taken just 42.3 million so far at the box office and if it's lucky when its cinematic run is over it will have made just 120 million leaving universal pictures with a loss of more than a hundred million dollars um that's made by the guy who did lord of rings isn't it can't think of his name right now but i believe it is it's basically like london's on wheels isn't it and they're fighting like city against city so it looked okay but uh, it's not doing well. That is a big flop to go alongside Robin Hood that was out recently. That was terrible, by all accounts. Okay, moving on. Nebula actress Karen Gillian has confirmed she has read the Guardians of the Galaxy 3 script. So, to me, that may, makes me know that she isn't going to die in Avengers 4. She's here. You know, I have also read that um, Gamora is definitely coming back. So she's not dead. You know, she's in the soul world, whatever it is. Once you're dead, you've got to stay dead. I know nobody does in comics, but I've said it before. I think it would just lessen the impact that Thanos had. Of course, we're getting Loki now with the series. He's dead, but we're getting a Loki series, so I don't know how that's going to work. 
probably good. I think he. Well, I read that he is supposedly going to remain dead, but this will be set earlier days. Benicio del Toro. Yeah, he was in a Star Wars, uh, The Last Jedi, wasn't he recently? And he is the collector in the MCU. Um, he is the voice, the villain, Swiper the Fox, in the live action Door the Explorer movie. Wow. He's hit hard times, hasn't he? Daredevil season four, I discussed it uh, last week, I believe. Well, that was expected to start filming in February. So it was a massive uh, shock, um, especially to Charlie Cox. I was reading that he was absolutely stunned. He, didn't, he was ready to go. So, uh, yeah, sad times with Daredevil. I thought season three was outstanding. In a recent hot comic book earlier, I spoke about Luke Frigno's son. Uh, he's just been cast as our man in uh, Stargirl. Well, Lou Ferrigno was hospitalised after a, a, a pneumonia shot, I believe. So he's uh, he's making steady progress, I think, from what I gather. But uh, yeah, rough time for him. Just a bit of comic news. Jack Kirby's grandson has shared a treasure trove of unused art. Um, mainly DC Fourth World stuff. Um, but a Soul Marvel piece that was in the collection is an original cover of Fantastic Four issue 175. A cover that got hot recently was a, I think it was a variant cover to Border Town from DC Comics. I was on the lookout for it. I couldn't find it. Um, but it was going for some... Decent coin at one point. Well, in the wake of a sexual abuse allegation against series writer Ur M. Esquerez, I think it is, um, the Border Town has been cancelled. So if you were enjoying Border Town, and I know some of you have been, um, that series is done and dusted due to sexual abuse allegations. Finally, Kevin Smith is to write the second series of Hit Girl for Image Comics. Um, I've got my daughter, she, she did me a pretty cool uh, Hit Girl on the blank cover recently. Um, and that is coming in February 13th of next year. So uh, yeah, good to see Kevin Smith back in comics. That's Daz, over and out, stay tuned. It's been a busy period. I've had my Christmas works party and all sorts. So I haven't been on too much, but I shall be undoubtedly trying to get out my hot top 10 later on today. And a big, big haul tomorrow. Fingers crossed. That's Dazzy over and out. Bye for now.